الحمد لله رب العالمين والعاقبة للمتقين ولا عدوان إلا على الظالمين وأصلي وأسلم على من بعث رحمة للعالمين سيدنا ونبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد ورنا وكتاب عمدة الأحكام written by العلامة الحافظ أبي محمد عبد الغني ابن عبد الواحد المقدسي ورنا والنكس سكن نسر and we have reached كتاب الطهارة كتاب الطهارة what does طهارة mean linguistically طهارة means linguistically النظافة والنزاهة من الأحداث linguistically it means النظافة purity والنزاهة من الأحداث to be purified to be clean from أحداث impurity اصطلاحا it means what اصطلاحا technically it means رفع الحدث two things technically it means two things رفع الحدث it is to remove from yourself حدث minor and major impurity the second thing is إزالة النجاسي and it's also to remove from yourself the dirt the najasa that is on you to remove it from yourself And the first thing, or the first uh, type, the first type, because the tahara is two types. The tahara al is two types. The first type is tahara haqiqiyya. Tahara haqiqiyya, which is basically the tangible tahara. The tangible tahara. And it is what? It is abtahara to al khubth. It is to purify, purify yourself from najasa, filth, dirt. And that najas, it falls on three places. The first one, it takes place on three places. Your body, al badan. Second is a thob, your clothes, and the third one, which is al makan, the place. Are you all with me? Makan, the place. The second type is called Tahara Hukmiya. It is not tangible. And it is the purity by ruling. Just by ruling. And that is specific to your body. It is specific to your body. And that type is of three types. That is of three types. Tahara Kubra. Wasugra. The minor purity. That's the major purity. Tahara Kubra, major purity. A minor purity. Wabadal Anhuma. And an alternative. Of the two, the my the major, the major impurity is what, al ghusl, to have a bath, the major. The minor is what, al wudu, it is ablution. The exchange or the alternative of both of them is at tayammum, at tayammum. So the Sheikh rahimahullah. He started his book with what? Kitab al-Tahara. So we defined and explained what Tahara means and the types, correct? We're now going to move on. What does the word Kitab mean? Kitab al-Tahara. Kitab is al dam wal jama When something comes together, uh, it's brought together. And it basically means ma jama'a abwaab and tarji'u ila aslin wahid. It is when chapters all go back to the same book. So Kitab means book. And what? There are many chapters. Babu, Babu. Those chapters all have in common one kitab, one book. So kitab means book, which is compiled in. The author, 
He started his book with Kitab al-Tahara. The reason is because لِأَنَّ أَشْرَفُ أَرْكَانِ الدِّينِ بَعْدَ التَّوْحِيدِ The greatest pillar after Tawheed is the Salah. وَلَا بُدَّ لَهَا مِنَ الطَّهَارَ And the Salah, it requires purification. Without it, it's a prerequisite for the Salah. So, it, because it's a prerequisite for the Salah, and the Salah is the greatest, noble, noblest action after the Shahadatayn, it, the Tahara goes before it. And it's mentioned before it. That is the first reason why he started with it. The second reason could be is to remind Al-Mut'allim, the student and the person who is taking the, this book and studying this book, the Mut'allim, the person who is taking this knowledge. It is reminding the individual who is seeking this knowledge or who is learning this book and is intending to acquire and obtain knowledge from it to purify his intention. To purify his intention. From what? Riya showing off. And that he does it sincerely for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone in seeking this path of knowledge. And that he doesn't intend from it except the face of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. <coughs> And because, brothers, because the tahara, it is done with two things, if you ponder. One is an asal and one is a farah. The asal is the water. The tahara is done by water or by turab. The ma, the water is the asal, the foundation. And that is why the Shaykh, he gave precedence to this kitab, the Babul Miyah, and the chapter of the water, and the what is permissible, and what about it. And then after that, we're going to go to the Tayammu. Mm -hmm. And then we finish Abu Taha. Now, if you go back, what did I say about the Ta, and uh, what did I say about. The, uh, the Tahara uh, Al Haqiqiyah. It's a Najasa, right? Mm. The Najasa, we're going to take the types of Najasa there are. Ayan al Najasa, the types of Najasa. It's Najas, 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 Bulu al Kelb. The dogs, the Kelb. Al Mavi, Al Wadi. They are Najasa. We'll take them and the evidences. Ayan al Najasa. The second part that we're going to do is Al Hadith. Minor and major impurity, and we study that. So those are all going to be taken in Kitabu al-Tahara. So the Shaykh Rahimahullah, he started his book Kitabu al-Tahara for those, those two reasons. <coughs> Al-Hadith al-Awwal, the first Hadith. An Umar ibn al-Khattab, radiyallahu ta'ala anhu, qala, sami'tu Rasulallahi, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, yaqul, innama al-a'malu bin niyyati, wa fi riwaya bin niyyati, wa innama likullim ri'im ma nawa, فمن كانت هجرته إلى الله ورسوله فهجرته إلى الله ورسوله ومن كانت هجرته لدنيا يصيبها أو امرأة يتزوجها فهجرته إلى ما هاجر إليه. This hadith أخرجه أصحاب الكتب المعتمدة. The scholars of Sunnah, the scholars of Hadith have transmitted this hadith. All of the six books have transmitted it. So Bukhari has brought this hadith. Muslim has narrated this hadith. Abu Dawood has narrated this hadith. Tirmidhi has narrated this hadith. Nasa'i has narrated this hadith. And Ibn Majah has narrated this hadith. So the Qutub al-Sitta. What are they? The Sahihain and Ashab sunan Let's go back to Bukhari. Bukhari narrated this hadith in seven places in his book. Sab'at al-Mawata. And the wordings are slightly different. The wordings are slightly different. Bukhari narrated in Kitab al-Bad al-Wahi, the first hadith he started it with. The first hadith. Kitab al-Bad al-Wahi. He also narrated it in Kitab al-Iman. He brought it. He also brought it the third, Kitab al-Itq. 
Then, fourth, Kitabu Manaqib al Ansar, the virtues of Ansar. Fifth, Kitabu Nikah. Sixth, Kitabu al Ayman wa Nudur. Seven, Kitabu al Hiyal. He brought it. Imam al Muslim narrated this hadith in Kitabu al Imara with the wording in the Mal A'malu bin Niyyah, not bin Niyyat. Bukhari narrated bin Niyyat. And he also narrated it as what? Bukhari? He narrated it as. Um, Bukhari narrated the hadith bin Niyyah. And he also narrated as what? Bin Niyyat. Imam Muslim did not narrate it bin Niyyat. Not all in any of his places. And I, told, I only told you that he narrated in one place. So he only narrated with bin Niyyat. The singular of the word Niyyat. Abu Dawood narrated in Kitab al-Talaq. Tirmidhi narrated in Kitab al-Fadail al-Jihad. Nasai he narrated in Kitab al-Tahara. Ibn Majah narrated in Kitab al-Zuhd. All of them, they all narrated bin Niyyah. All the six books that I mentioned, they all have the word bin Niyyah. Does that make sense? As for the word Al-Niyyat, the rest have it, except Imam Muslim. Imam Muslim doesn't have the Niyyat. So he's not Mutafaqun Ali. That's the first point regarding the authenticity uh, of the Hadith. This, and that's the condition of the author of this book. That all of the Hadith that he's going to narrate is going to be Sahihain. Bukhari and Muslim, what they agreed on. And inshallah, we're going to find some places where he got it wrong, and we're going to mention them. By using the what? Um, and Imam Zakashi, his Mukat, he pointed it out, the hadith which Muhammad Muslim got, got it wrong. Uh, sorry, Abdul Ghani, Abdul Wahid al Maghdisi got it wrong. But all the hadith in this book is all authentic, all of them. The second mas'ala of this book is the hadith Al Imam Malik, huh? the people who ascribed this to hadith, saying that Imam Malik narrated the hadith like that, got it wrong. And the ones who negated from a Malik not narrating it has also got it wrong. So, ascribing it just like that and negating it just like that, each both parties are wrong. Ibn Hajar rahimahullah in his Fatih al Bari, he said, Thumma hadha al hadith muttafaqun ala sihati. This hadith is agreed on its authenticity. The hadith in the Malam al Binad. Akhrajahu al A'immatu al Mashhurin. The scholars, the, the scholars are the famous and well-known scholars of all, huh? they've all narrated this hadith. Illa al except in the Muwatta of Imam Malik. It's not narrated. Wa and he said, they got it wrong. Man za'ama annahu fil Muwatta. He said, they got it wrong. The person who says that it's in the Muwatta, they got it wrong. He, said, he refuted that. You see, Imam Ibn Hajar. And that is who? Ibn Hajar, that Imam who's Muttali'a. He said that. Uh, Badruddin al Aini, in his Umdat al Qari, he also says something like that. Ahmed Shakir also, the Ihkam al Ahkam, he also then, the Taliq he had on it, he also said that. But, Ibn Hajar didn't get that wrong, they're right. And also, Badruddin al Aini, he got it wrong. And also, Ahmed Shakir, which in the hadith is narrated by Imam Malik in Wata. And this shows you, an al ihata lillah. No one is able to encompass everything except Allah. Because the Kitab al muwatta it has many people who narrated from Imam Malik. Abdullah ibn Maslamat al qanabi is one of the narrators. Yahya ibn Yahya al Laythi is one of the people narrated. That's the most common one. That is the Yahya ibn Yahya al Laythi has become very common because Ibn Abdul Bar in his Kitab al Tabheed he explained that and in his istidqa. The sharah that he used is Yahya ibn Yahya al Laythi. Good. But there's a narration of Imam Malik in Muwatta by who? Muhammad ibn Hassan al Shaybani. Muhammad ibn Hassan al Shaybani, who, who took the Kitab al Muwatta Imam Malik and narrated it. He narrated this hadith in the Malam Alu bin Niyad. The third point that we need to mention is some scholars have by accident said that this hadith is mutawatir. They said that this hadith is what? It's mutawatir. Hafiz al Iraqi refuted them in his Tarh al he refuted it. He said, أطلق بعضهم. He said, some of them have said, على الحديث, they said about this hadith, 
اسم التواتر إذا ليس الحديث المتواتر وبعضهم اسم الشهرة and some of them they say the hadith is mashur وليس كذلك أن مات is not like that وإنما هو فرض this hadith is فرض singular narration ومن أطلق ذلك anyone who said that is متواتر or anyone who said it is mashur فمحمول we will consider and we think what they mean by that is على أنه أراد الاشتهار أو التواتر they mean that it became famous and it became multitude mutawatir fi akhir sanadi at the ending of the chain of narration when it was narrated from Yahya ibn Sa'ad. From that point it became tawatir. Very good. The first point, fourth point is the scholars ittafaqa ulama in Islam. The scholars of Islam have all agreed upon the authenticity of this hadith. وتلقوه بالقبول and they have considered it and taken it on with acceptance and they've honored it Bukhari رحمه الله he brought it in his صحيح and it's the most authentic book in the book of Allah and he made it what وقامه مقام الخطبة له and he made it like the خطبة he started his book with it emphasizing and trying to point out in Bukhari رحمه الله that every action that Allah's face is not intended, that it's batil, وَلَا ثَمَرَةَ لَهُ فِي الدُّنْيَا وَلَا فِي الْآخَرَةِ And that it has no essence and no reward for it in this dunya and nor in the hereafter. Imam al-Nawawi in the Sharh of Sahih al-Muslim, he said, أَجْمَعَ الْمُسْلِمُونَ The scholars are unanimously in agreement. عَلَىٰ عِضَمِ مَوْقِعِ هَذِ الْحَدِيثِ The position that this hadith is, وَكَثْرَةُ فَوَائِدِ And the great benefits that it has, وَصِحَّتِ and his authenticity. They are agreement on it. Ibn Rajab, in Jami Ulum al Hikam, he says, وهذا الحديث أحد الأحاديث التي يدور الدين عليها. Ibn Hajar, Ibn Rajab said, in his Jami Ulum al Hikam, this hadith is one of the ahadith that the religion revolves around. Revolves around. Hafid al Iraqi, rahimahullah, in his Tarh al Tathrib, he says, هذا الحديث, this hadith, قاعدة من قواعد الإسلام. It's a principle. From the principles of Islam. Ibn Hajar rahimahullah, he said in Fatuh al-Bari, وَقَدْ تَوَاتَرَ النَّقْلُ عَنِ الْأَئِمَّةِ He said it has come in multitude narration. The, the, the speeches of the scholars فِي تَعْظِيمِ قَدْرِ هَذَا الْحَدِيثِ In honoring this hadith. قَالَ أَبُوْ عَبْدِ اللَّهِ He said, Abu عَبْدِ اللَّهِ أَحْمَدْ بْنَ حَمْبَلْ said, لَيْسَ فِي أَخْبَارِ النَّبِي صَلَّى عَلَيْهِ سَلَمَ شَيْءٌ أَجْمَعُ أَغْنَى وَأَكْثَرَ فَائِدَةً that there is no narration from the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam more comprehensive, more sufficing, more greater in benefits than this hadith. Fifth is some of the scholars, the fifth point, Sabab Urud al Hadith, the reasoning of this hadith coming. Ibn Daqiq al Eid, Rahimahullah, in his Ihkam al Ahkam, in the 63rd page, he says أَنَّ السَّبَبَ يَقْتَضِي أَنَّ الْمُرَادِ بِالْحَدِيثِ الْهِجْرَةِ مِنْ مَكَّةَ إِلَى الْمَدِينَةِ لأنهم نقلوا أن رجلا هاجر من مكة إلى المدينة لا يريد بذلك فضيلة الهجرة وإنما هاجر ليتزود أمرأة تسمى أم قيس فسمي مهاجر أم قيس ولهذا خص في الحديث ذكر المرأة دون سائر ما تنوى به الهجرة من الأفراد والأعراض الدنيوية ثم أتبعت بالدنيا that it was a man who migrated from Mecca to Medina. His intention was not what the other companions done the hijrah for. The other companions, they went there for the Prophet ﷺ and the deen of Allah. That's why their intent was. He went there to Medina, from Mecca to Medina. He did it because there was a woman, Abu Qais, in which he wanted and he loved and he wanted to get married to. So the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, in this hadith, he specified, and anyone who marry anyone who does, فمن كانت هجرته لدنيا يصيبها أو امرأة ينكحها, a woman was mentioned after the dunya because of this man. Ibn Hajar رحمه الله in his Fatuh al-Bari, he says that this hadith is صحيح على شرط الشيخين. That this hadith is authentic, and it's of the conditions of Bukhari and Muslim. But he said أن أن حديث الأعمال that this hadith, إنما العمل بالنيات 
Siyaka bi sababi dhalik. He said that some people said that this is the reasoning for the hadith of Inna Malamalu bin Yad. Wala ara fi shay'in min al-turuqi ma yaqtadi al-tasrih. And he said, I have not come across any of the narration, any of the narration, something that has indicated that this hadith in the Mal'amalu bin Yad actually came regarding this man. Yes, the hadith is authentic and it's sahih. But there is no narration that clearly brings any bond and any relation between the two. Now, 